We're back with Congressman uh, Raja Krishnamurthy here in my backyard. And uh, Congressman, uh, your uh, office out in Schaumburg, where, uh, where you also make your home. Um, has your family, by the way, been safe? Uh, have, have, have they? Uh, Senator Durbin told us a few weeks ago about his grandchildren in New York, in Brooklyn, uh, coming down with, and, and the whole family there coming down with the coronavirus. Uh, thank you for asking, Mike. Uh, they, they have been safe. Um, I should tell you, my, my wife is an anesthesiologist, and like uh, a lot of her colleagues, she's been pressed into uh, intubating COVID patients in the ICU as well as doing procedures for them. So Where does she work? At uh, Hinsdale and LaGrange hospitals. Um, and so we're saying an extra prayer for all of our frontline workers and healthcare workers in general. Um, we just, you know, want to make sure they come home safe. Um, but thank you for thank you for asking. So let, let me ask you about uh, your uh, your predecessor up there in that northwest suburban uh, congressional uh, district, uh, Tammy Duckworth, now in the U.S. Senate, of course, has been mentioned as a potential candidate for VP. Who do you uh, think Joe Biden should pick? I think she'd be an outstanding choice. She's my, of course, my star constituent, so I'm a little prejudiced. But um, you know, I think that the the vice president should choose someone who could serve on day one as president um, should the need uh, ever arise, God forbid. Does she think, have that kind of experience? Oh, oh absolutely. Um, not only has she served in the House and now the Senate, uh, but she's also uh, obviously uh, served in the military and in the administration of uh, President Barack Obama. So she's actually been um, in a in a number of positions that will uh, come in handy in terms of the experience that it lends for being vice president. Um, so there's been, there's, there's been a, an argument made by some African-American politicians that he should pick, uh, since he's committed to a woman, it should be Kamala Harris or, or another uh, black woman politician, Val Demings. Well, Val is my uh, good friend and colleague on the intelligence committee. She's and, a Democrat from Florida. Yes, and she's extremely able. Um, I think the good news is that we have a lot of talented folks uh, that would make excellent uh, vice presidents. But I think above all, um, you know, Joe Biden is going to choose somebody that he's comfortable with um, and who can do the job of president on day one. And I think that's the most important criterion that he should that he should use. Well, you. Uh... You've seen uh, the Trump, uh, President Trump's campaign is uh, revving up. Uh, he uh, has, uh, of course, been touting his uh, vindication, his exoneration by the Senate in the impeachment trial. Any regrets? No. Um, you know, I think that this was obviously an, an issue that I came to with uh, a great deal of, um, how do I say it, um, reluctance uh, in the first part. I think. It was really the worst day of so my. You don't think it was a mistake? No. Um, even though it was perhaps the worst day of my congressional career to have to vote to impeach the president, um, I knew what I was doing was absolutely correct given the overwhelming evidence uh, that we had gathered as part of the impeachment uh, hearings uh, within the Intelligence Committee. Uh, that being said, now uh, we have to move forward. Uh, we have a pandemic in which uh, upwards of 90,000 people uh, have, have died. I believe that the president did not respond properly at the outset, and that led to an exponential rise in cases. But now we have to act on a nonpartisan or bipartisan basis to fix the problem and make sure that we keep our people safe. So let me uh, let me ask, Congressman, you serve on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, the Attorney General Bill Barr, um, has recommended that the, the charges in that uh, perjury uh, case against uh, 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 former National Security Advisor Flynn be dropped. Um, there uh, is also uh, the Assistant Attorney General, Mr. Durham, is investigating supposedly Obamagate, as the president calls it. Um, are you worried about uh, the Democrats uh, getting uh, tarred by that? No, I'm not. I remember, uh, Mike, when we were in the minority in Congress, um, the Republicans had pursued this very investigation uh, in a joint investigation between the uh, Intelligence and Judiciary Committees at that time. 
And so I participated in those investigations, and it turned out to be a complete nothing burger. Um, with regard to Michael Flynn, that's an absolute travesty. Michael Flynn was convicted of lying and perjury, um, and he has a number of uh, what I would call unpatriotic uh, associations with uh, folks in Russia and other places. All that being said, uh, you know, Bill Barr, unfortunately, uh, did something that an attorney general should never do, which is rather than act as an attorney for the people of the United States, it appears that he acted as an attorney for Donald Trump. And that is not right. Let me ask, uh, last, uh, last topic, uh, there are reports that the president's preparing to uh, launch big arena rallies again. Um, should Joe Biden get out of the basement there at his home in Delaware and come to Chicago, come to Schaumburg, uh, go to Michigan and Wisconsin? How should he campaign? Of course, he's welcome in all these places, and I think he's popular in all these places. But I think, Mike, um, Right now, I think the most important thing is uh, as we reopen the economy, as we uh, make sure that uh, we can save livelihoods and save lives, uh, that we also campaign in a way that is respectful of the public health situation we're in. And so I think that Joe Biden uh, would rightly, you know, I don't think he would probably uh, hold a big uh, congregational type of event right now, given the health risks. Well, and the I president would, might say derisively that he couldn't draw a crowd. Uh, I don't think that would be the reason. Um, I think that the, the reason would be that there's just too much risk of uh, a second wave of infections. And I think that the president, I respectfully submit to the president, um, doing something like that would probably cause the same result. And um, I think that that would, you know, cause, you know, police officers and, and, and other people that would have to guard the president, uh, you know, potentially getting sick. I mean, this is not a, a light issue. I'm all for, you know, opening up the economy and we have to do it as quickly as we can, but let's do it safely. And uh, do, you let's have a, do you have a plan? Uh, you, you obviously uh, are also, your name's on the ballot in the fall. Uh, wh when do you plan to start uh, resuming the luncheon speeches and, uh, the handshaking uh, kind of campaign stops? Well, I've been doing a lot of virtual campaigning, uh, Mike, and I think that um, at some point we will uh, resume more in-person appearances, but um, it's gonna be probably a couple months yet uh, once people feel uh, more comfortable with that. All right, Congressman uh, Raja Krishnamurthy uh, from uh, Schaumburg, thank you so much uh, for joining